Hey, how you doing? Hey guys, wow, it's eventually working. I have no idea what just went on with my internet there, but it seemed to uh, play the intro twice there. So you got treated to a lovely bit of delay there on the good old intro. Anyway, who is in the house today? We've got Prickles, the bed bug here. We've got Guelo, hopefully not Guelo 60. <laughs> uh, who else have we got? We've got Matthew. We've got Falco. Greetings, greetings, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Um, just tell me, please, because I have no idea if this is uh, working properly. Like, this channel is notorious for technical glitches on the live stream. So, please, uh, can you let me know if you can hear me okay? Just uh, maybe type something in the chat just to let me know. Um, because I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to sort of start the stream properly if it's not working so okay so guelo says yes um matthew says we can't hear you uh i does that mean yes or no anyway i think the majority people majority of people apart from matthew say that it isn't working so everybody else says perfect that's amazing okay well we've got an interesting one for you uh mr ccp shouty man is back um now Obviously, I'm going to get into that, but we're going to start with something a little bit different, but um, it is actually related to what we're talking about today. So let me just open this up. Okay, let me pause that for a second and turn the volume up. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this. This is a clip that's been circulating the Chinese internet on Weibo. Um it was recorded this month. I think it was like even possibly like within the last like couple of days or something. Uh, let's just play it and you'll see what's going on here. Okay, so uh, taxi driver says, where are you from? Uh, that's quite a common thing when you get into a taxi and you're a foreigner. Taxi driver will often ask you the first question. There's a rule, actually. The taxi driver will usually ask you, where are you from? Are you married? And how much money do you make a month? This is a common thing in China. Okay, so Japanese. They're from Japan. They're Japanese. So I don't want to take the Japanese. No way. <laughs> He's like, may uh, banfa. He's like, why? And he's like, huh? Get out. Okay, let's watch that one more time, uninterrupted. Uh, 
，日本人呢、啊？对，日本人那就没办法拉了，日本人。嗯，来来来来来来来，下去吧，下去吧。日本人没没办法拉，日本人没办法拉。哎，为什么？啊？为什么？没办法，没办法。好，不好意思，不好意思，让你下去吧，哈。Okay, so the taxi driver clearly doesn't want to take them because they're Japanese. <laughs> Now, im just imagine this happened in Japan or here in the UK. It would blow up. It would be a big deal, and everybody would be saying how racist the taxi driver is. And I'm sure in China as well, a lot of people really did not like the way that taxi driver acted towards those Japanese people. And you know, you have to understand that in China there is this real deep hatred towards Japanese people because. Obviously, what happened in the Second World War, you know,、um, the Nanjing massacre. The Japanese really did some atrocious things、um, to Chinese people during the Second World War, and it was pretty horrific. But they've been holding this grudge for such a long time towards Japanese people, and. Is it really necessary? I mean, these Japanese people that got into the taxi. Do they represent、um, the Japanese Empire from the Second World War? Did they get into the taxi and start talking about how great the Nanjing massacre was? I don't think so, right? They're just a couple of Japanese, possibly businessmen, just getting in a taxi, just want to go somewhere. Don't even care about the politics or whatever. But obviously, this、uh, this taxi driver、um, has a grudge. Against Japanese people, he really doesn't like Japanese people. I mean, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You know, like,、um, and I did see somebody wrote because I got this、um, from a guy on Twitter called Byron Byron Wan. He's I think he's an American-born Chinese guy.、Uh, he posts a lot on Twitter about the CCP, and I saw somebody commented saying, "Oh, it would be like if a Jewish、uh, taxi driver." Told a German to go away, and I think that's pretty lame. That's a pretty lame comment because I don't think Jewish people particularly hate German people. I think you know if、um, if a guy got into a, a taxi run by a Jewish person and he was wearing like a, a Nazi uniform and he's he's got a swastika on,、um, he's got a swastika tattooed on his forehead. Then yeah, of course the taxi driver would get pissed off and kick him out, right? But you know, there's plenty of、um, German Jewish people. There's Jewish people with a German nationality, so it's just ridiculous、um, why this taxi driver would just decide to kick them out just because they're from Japan. It's not very nice. Oh, oh, 不好意思，不好意思，让你下去吧，哈。So yeah, it just reminded me of,、um, you know, when、um, some people in China. I mean, these are actually people from China, Chinese citizens, decide to go out wearing a kimono from Japan, like you know the traditional Japanese clothes. And、um, here's a case that happened fairly recently.、Um, so we're here for a photo shoot. Um, if you have worn hanfu, I,、um, basically she's getting kicked out of somewhere just because she's wearing a kimono. So if you had worn hanfu, that's like the traditional Chinese clothes. I wouldn't say yeah, this. I say this right? But you, a Chinese par person, are wearing a kimono now. Does a kimono represent Imperial Japan from the Second World War, and you know, before the Second World War in the 1930s? Is that like、uh, Imperial Japanese clothing? No, it's just some traditional Japanese clothing. So, what's the big deal? You're you're Chinese. You're Chinese. Are you you're Chinese? Aren't you? Do you have the right to shout at me this loudly? She says. Yes. Why? If you don't cooperate with us. You're picking quarrels and provoking trouble. Just because I'm wearing a kimono? Okay, come with us. 
takes her away. And again, um, it happened. It's happened quite a few times. Like there's been quite a few instances where it's been caught on camera. Okay, sorry, maybe I'll have to translate that. Let me get back to it. Okay, nipunang, nipunang. You can't, you can't. Um, ni ben lai jo bunang lai. You can't come in. Uh, right, right. She said, and then at the end, she said, if you change your clothes, you can come in. So this was during the whole um, COVID period. She was going in for one of those PCR tests, but she was denied entry just because she was wearing a kimono, um, which, again, it's just pretty ridiculous, pretty ridiculous. Um, so anyway. I just thought I would show the opposite of this. Um, so she said, if you change your clothes, you can come back. <laughs> so here we have some people wearing some traditional Chinese clothes uh, in Japan, walking around. Okay, uh, oh, let me just translate. And I took the music off because it's some copywritten music and I don't want to get copyright struck, you know. My channel, um, it really, really doesn't... Um, it doesn't get enough views anyway. Uh, I don't make hardly any money off of this channel, so I don't want to risk getting a copyright strike as well. Um, so anyway, look. So it says, ah, Zhongguo, the Chinese, Chinese. Wow. Dweya, just your hanfu, ya. This is uh, traditional Chinese clothes or whatever. Okay. Dwey. Is this not Chinese clothes? Um, and then it's like something like you shouldn't wear these uh, these clothes. Yeah. Okay. Woman should jongo or en. Oh yeah. Sorry, it's going too fast. Yeah, we should wear han. We should wear the hanfu. Shouldn't we? You know, it's like, oh, we should wear this, shouldn't we? And then, ah, should Jongo Funga? Ah, it's Chinese style. Right. It's Chinese style. Ah, it's really beautiful. See, look, so they're walking around Japan. Everything's a okay. You don't really see any Japanese security guards going up to them and, uh, telling them to get out because they're wearing Chinese clothes, you know? So I think it's kind of ridiculous. You know, it's perfectly fine for them to walk around. And then there's someone from Taiwan. Uh, it says some Taiwan person or Taiwan compatriot or whatever that says. And it says, um, it's really small, sorry. It says, uh, this This is our, um, our the, the Hanfu is very beautiful. Yeah, so the, even the Taiwanese people love it. So look, they're just perfectly fine to walk around. I mean, you know, it's only clothes at the end of the day, right? It's just some clothes. It doesn't even represent politics or anything like that. It's just some historical clothes. You know, and they look good. You know, why can't a, a Chinese person wear their nice looking clothes in Japan? And why can't a Japanese uh, a person wear nice looking Japanese clothes in China? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's actually very silly. But this is kind of related to what we're going to talk about with the whole piano gate thing anyway. Uh, this is kind of setting it up. And here we are. Um, this is in London. Again, you know, um, Chinese people wearing their traditional clothes. Um, hold on. Let's get back to that. God, it's going too fast. Okay. So uh, this is uh, Ali Aligato. I think that's trying to say like Arigato, Arigato. Somebody said Arigato. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Woman, Bashur Rubenda, we're not Japanese. We're not from Japan. Buyao uh, Shou Ali Gado, don't say Arigato, which is thank you in Japanese. So somebody obviously said Arigato to them. Okay. 
Aligado again. It says it. Okay, Joe Shuruben, Nasha Rubenda. This is Japanese. And he's like, woman lights the jungle. We're from China. Ah, oh, God, it went too fast again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Amateur hour. Uh, woman lights the jungle. Okay. This is from Japan. No. <laughs> These are Chinese traditional clothes. Okay. China, China. Yeah, it's China. Okay. And then there's a Japanese dude there. And he's saying, um, this is Chinese style. What do you think? Kind of thing. And yeah, this is a fashionable Chinese style. And yeah, so, you know, perfectly fine. Just walking around, <laughs> just walking around wearing these traditional Chinese clothes in London. Perfectly fine. And then they're getting people to say, I love China. <laughs> Fair enough. Not, not a problem with this at all. Okay, hold on. Let's see. What are you on about? You are shilling for CCP now. Those are not traditional Chinese clothes. Stop falling for CCP propaganda. Okay, well, wherever they're from, it doesn't matter if people wear them. That's the point that we're trying to make here. Okay, I'm not shilling for CCP. Give me a break. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a CCP shill now. Okay, yeah, you know, just dancing around wearing the clothes perfectly a-okay but then you've got this kind of crap where you know this chinese nationalist just goes around uh japan famous japanese locations waving the chinese flag you know i wonder what would happen to a japanese person if they went to all of these famous uh, tourist sites in china and just started waving the japanese flag around do you think it would be okay do you think they might get into a little bit of trouble? <laughs> so anyway, and just very quickly, just one more thing about the clothes and then we will move on, okay? But this is in Taiwan and these people are wearing Japanese kimonos and look at the reception that they get. I mean, you know, if I remember my history correctly, I'm pretty sure that... Um, Taiwan, you know, the ROC, the Republic of China, also um, had a lot of um, bad things happen to them by the Japanese in the Second World War, right? So, you know, but these people are just wearing their kimonos and they've got a big crowd and everybody's having a great time, which is just how it should be, okay? <laughs> Okay, what's this dude saying here? Uh, those are CCP clothes, nothing Chinese. CCP wants you to believe those are Chinese. Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, traditional clothing are nothing like these CCP LARPing cosplays. Uh, whatever, dude. Okay, so anyway. Remember the whole piano gate incident with uh, Brendan Kavanaugh, Dr. K, and there were some uh, Chinese people in the background, um, and he was filming his live stream, and the Chinese people told him to stop filming them. Uh, you're not allowed to film us. You don't have our consent, um, and all of that awful stuff. It was pretty hilarious, um, and... Remember the video from the Chinese girl? What was her name? I can't even remember her name. It's not even important, but yeah, she was... Um, because... Because um, Brendan Kavanaugh um, kept accidentally, apparently accidentally calling them Japanese. Hey, hello. Are, you, are you from Japan? No, I'm from China. Oh, you so they were really annoyed by this. And once again, it's because, you know, Chinese people have this, well, obviously not all Chinese people, right? But there is this hatred for Japan, obviously because of what happened in the Second World War. But I'm trying to argue that that was a really, really long time ago. And the Japan of today is nothing like it was during the Second World War. 
um, you know, all of these Japanese people that the Chinese people dislike, they do not represent Imperial Japan from the 1930s and 1940s. Okay, so apparently she was really offended that she got called Japanese, which I don't quite understand why she thinks that's um, a big issue. And Brendan already said that there was um, there was a Japanese TV crew there. All right. So look, even though he already knew that we were Chinese, he continued to joke that we are Japanese and that our activities were a bit sneaky. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, what are you saying? Uh, although most normal people there don't give a flying beep about it, really, just wanted to go about their daily business. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and we have like CCP was World War II Imperial Japan allies. CCP helped Nanking massacre to happen. Yeah, okay. The Japanese people here doing. Can you see them? There's all sorts of stuff. We've got a Japanese TV crew in the station. Okay, so he got. She got really offended that Brendan was calling, calling her Japanese, her and her friends, which, in my opinion, is kind of ridiculous. Because, you know, like, for example, when I was in China, um, the amount of times that somebody called me Russian, <laughs> uh, I didn't get offended by that. I wasn't offended because somebody was calling me Russian, um, you know, or I got called American. I got called everything but British. Uh, why would you care about that? Does it really matter? You know, not everybody knows the difference between somebody from China and somebody from Japan. Yeah, it's not a big deal. So anyway, let's move on to this because this is what we really want to talk about today. So do you remember this guy? Um, what was his name again? <laughs> what was his name? Again, the guy's name is really not important. We're not really here to name who he is. But this guy, this is the main instigator of Piano Gate, the stop touching her, Mr. Mm -hmm. Shouty Man. And uh, I just wanted to just refresh your memory as to who he is. So let's get it big for everybody to see. her don't touch her please touch do not touch her please you are not the same age please do not touch her don't touch her please don't touch her <laughs> okay you remember that guy don't you okay and uh no I, I don't think he's stoned i think he's actually serious there he was trying to voice coach um and yes he did really do those noises uh those are all on his youtube channel so Anything that I've used has been things that he's actually publicly posted. So, you know, it's quite funny. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's not stone. So this is the guy who said, um, stop touching her. You are not the same age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, Matthew. It's that guy. They're not the same age. Yeah, he's very right. <laughs> so uh, recently he has appeared again. Uh, and he's been on this um, this website, Newsflare. I mean, honestly, I don't even know what Newsflare is, really. Um, but I saw that Brendan Kavanagh, Dr. K, posted this onto his uh, Twitter page. He posted a link to this. Um, and it's actually, apparently, this um, news agency or whatever they are, 
they have um, interviewed Newton and asked him about the whole piano gate thing. So I thought we'd just, because uh, I covered this uh, quite extensively on my channel, um, so I thought I'd just talk about it just to add to it, really, because it's part of the ongoing story. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so it says, um, Chinese guide who clashed with St. Pancras pianist defends his actions. Okay, so let's read it. It's quite interesting. Okay, why can't I get this full screen so I can even see it? Uh, hold on, I've actually got a, a saved copy on my computer somewhere. Let's see. Sorry, guys, but for some reason, it's not allowing me to go full screen on my computer. So I'm going to have to open up the article and read it from there. Uh, let's see. Sorry about this, guys. Just give me a second, okay? Bear with me. I'm sure you guys can see it. All right, I got it up finally. Okay, so let me just put it full screen on there for you so at least you can see it, and then I'll just read it and talk about it. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> the Chinese guide, um, is he a guide? who clashed with a pianist in London, has defended the encounter, denying he is an armed handler for the Communist Party. <laughs> okay. Newton Lung was with several other Chinese res residents when he asked Brendan Kavanagh to avoid showing them in his, in his live stream from the iconic piano at St. Pancras International Station on January 20th. Wow, time does fly. It's been almost three months since that whole thing happened. Uh, however, a furious argument ensued, with Newton yelling at Brendan when he touched a red China flag before British transport police officers arrived to de-escalate the situation. Uh, the footage sparked bizarre conspiracy theories that Newton is an agent for the Communist Party, with Brendan even telling Mike Graham on Talk TV on Tuesday that MI5 are now involved. I mean... At the time, it was a little bit weird because they were saying they they were trying to say that he might have had a gun and he was like an armed bodyguard, which was a little bit bizarre, to be honest with you. But, you know, I think a lot of people saw what he said. I think the girl was saying, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. But really, I think she meant don't film him, don't film him. And people misinterpreted that and it just went a little bit crazy and everybody started thinking that he was some sort of like secret Chinese Communist Party agent you know a bodyguard which is pretty ridiculous or a, a state handler as it says here which obviously um, upon reflection it was a bit ridiculous to think that but you know you can kind of see why people were thinking that for a while because it was a very bizarre situation anyway he said he had no regrets about the confrontation and would do the same again to protect those in his group, which was recording a video promoting Chinese New Year celebrations in London for Chinese TV. Okay, fair enough. He said, obviously none of that is true, that I work for the CCP, and the majority of people don't believe it either, except his followers. I think we need to uh, move to the next slide don't we let's go there we go okay um so he says obviously none of that is true i don't work for the ccp and the majority of people don't believe it either except his followers <laughs> people choose to be racist homophobic was there anything about being homophobic from there was there any like you know was he being accused of being gay or anything i don't think so and a manipulative online presence for monetary reasons, which is one of the sorrows of today. But didn't this guy capitalize on it as well by trying to um, sell T-shirts saying, don't touch her, you know, stop touching her? What the hell is going on? Like, that is crazy. He actually did make some T-shirts and tried to capitalize on the whole thing. 
<laughs> okay. Um, his video is using the instigated situation for online exposure. In such a divided world, we need people to unite with love. Unite with love. Is that why you shout at somebody at the top of your voice not to touch somebody? Is that why you pull the race card? Because you want people to unite with love? <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. For me, it's about upholding my right and challenging that malicious behavior. Are you kidding me? This video was for people who are from the Chinese community around the world and people who are interested and open to the world cultures. It should be a warm time and reunion for family and friends. It's such a shame that such a great opportunity to celebrate this has been twisted with political viewpoints. I'm sorry, dude, but you know, when you're talking about celebrating Lunar New Year and you're like waving a Chinese flag as if to say that represents everybody who um, who celebrates Lunar New Year, well, that's making it political by waving that flag in the first place. You know what I mean? Like how many other countries celebrate Lunar New Year? Um, Korea, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines. So does waving that flag mean that, you know, you're representing everybody who uh, celebrates Lunar New Year? And that is a communist flag. Even if it is the flag of uh, China, it still is a communist flag. What do those stars represent? One, the, big, the main big star is the Communist Party of China. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> that's just very, very odd. Uh, no one should even remotely relate our intention of filming a celebration of the Chinese Spring Festival to any diplomatic or political agenda. But then again, you are filming that for Chinese state media to be on the Spring Festival Gala, the most viewed um, TV show in the entire world, right? Created by the Chinese Communist Party. So I think you possibly have a political agenda. And if you don't want any attention, why wave the flag in the background in the first place? So the answer is clearly no. It was not connected to Chinese diplomatic projects. Okay, okay. Well, it seems like good old um, whatever his name is. Is it Newton? Yeah, it seems like once again he's trying to play the whole race card when uh, China is not a race. The CCP is not a race, okay? It's just very, very silly. Very silly indeed. So it seems like he's just grasps, grasping at straws and, you know, just trying to get a response. But I think he's left it far too late to come out with this to defend himself. Like, why is he defending himself now? You know, he could have done this like weeks ago, months ago, and it's a very weak response. You know, just this crappy article, you know, just, just hidden on the Internet. At least the girl actually bothered to make a video to defend herself. But this is just really weak. And how was Brendan Kavanaugh racist? You know, he wasn't racist at all. He didn't say anything racist. He just said, this is not China. You're not in China now. And the rules of the CCP do not apply here in the UK. Um, you know, filming in public is perfectly fine. What What is it about having a camera set up or even having a phone set up um, that people don't like? And why do people who don't want to be filmed, they come up to you and tell you not to film them? But and they don't want to be filmed, and yet they come up to the cameraman. It's ridiculous. Did you see my video where the Darth Vader guy pushed me? Um, you know, he was telling me not to film him, and yet he's coming up to me when I've got my camera turned on. It's just ridiculous. So Newton Lung, whatever his name is, ah, he's just deluded, and he's left it far too late. Like he's just too late to the game just leave it dude like it's over now you know like it's over and why am i even doing a live stream about this in the first place <laughs> you know i just think it's um like i said i covered this story extensively um and i figured this is just a continuation of it so it was worthy of doing a live stream and uh you know that whole like 
when they're trying to call somebody racist um, and they're crying discrimination and that kind of thing, but then at the same time, they're talking about how um, it's bad to um, mistake them for a Japanese person and trying to act like that's a bad thing. It just doesn't make sense. Um, it's They're just a, a bunch of hypocrites. So, yeah. Anyway, that is pretty much all I wanted to talk about today, guys. So let's uh, open up the chat now and see if anybody wants to uh, ask me something or make a comment. Let's see. Send Newton an invite to chat online here. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how to reach him, to be honest with you. Okay. Sounds like he's been pondering this for a while, came to the point uh, where everybody else has their opinion of him. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if he'd have just kind of maybe apologized or tried to argue his case sooner, but it's just too little too late, really, isn't it, you know? And if he'd have just explained himself a little bit better, then none of this would have even happened in the first place. But he was the one that started to get aggressive and started to shout. Okay, the CCP has made the flag and the people equivalent to the government. It's pathetic, but foreign governments seem to respect that delusion. Well, yeah, I'm afraid so. Uh, top job, mate. No, not really, man. Like, uh, this was a complete rush job of a live stream. But, uh, you know, I just want to put out more content and... Yeah, it was just fun anyway. It was fun, and we did have a point to it. It wasn't like it was just a pointless stream. You can reach him at the Chinese embassy. No, nah, mate, I already tried calling the embassy. <laughs> no, I didn't really. Like, hey, oh, hi, is Newton there? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think he's at the Chinese embassy. I think he's, um, actually, I have no idea, you know, like I haven't really even looked into anything about his personal life. Okay, 100% uh, right. Chinese is the most misused word. Yeah, like the whole Lunar New Year thing, you know, it's, they call it the Chinese New Year, but it's not only China that celebrates this holiday. You know what I mean? So, yeah, come on, guys, throw me some questions or I am out of here. But, uh, yeah, thanks again. Oh, and by the way, um, could you do me a favor? And uh, if you have a minute, just please go and watch my new video that I put out today. If you have the time, I'm going to leave a link for it because hardly anyone watched it. And I think it's uh, it's quite a good one. It's worth watching. Here's a link. Please open it up and uh, go and check it out. Uh, let's see. Hong Kong, don't forget them. Well, I have my um, Hong Kong t-shirt here. Home Kong. It's from the Hong Kong protests. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Great vid. Yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, which, which one is your movie channel again? Ah... Uh, which movie channel, mate? Like, can you tell me what was on there? Because I've got a couple of, like, other smaller channels, but I don't know if it's worth even mentioning it on here, to be honest. Uh, hello, I just got here. I won't ask any question as I will only be... Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. Yeah, please go and watch it because it really um, didn't get that many views. Uh, and it would be nice if it could, because I think it's like one of my better videos and it's kind of like one of my, uh, old school videos. Um, you know, what I used to make back in the past when I was doing the whole shill busting thing It's it's a very much an old school Lewis kind of video. I gave it a like when it, thank you very much, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Uh, NFC is Miles Gore. Yeah, dude, I can't be bothered reading that. Sorry. Um, you did a video in Canada. Yeah, that's right. Um, let me, God, let me find it. Uh, what is that channel? Just give me a sec. I'll find it for you. Do you want that specific video, right? Uh, here we go. 
Oh, look, there it is. I'll give you the video. So that's just a video that I filmed in in Canada, Canada. Uh, there we go. That's the uh, the Rambo filming locations, although it really has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Uh, I watch all that you put out. Cheers, mate. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I'll watch it. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. The more views, the better, because, like, you know, I'm not going to be begging for views or anything like that. But, you know, when a video gets more views, then it gets boosted in the algorithm or whatever the hell. And then more people um, get it recommended in, in their news, in their YouTube feed. Um, so, you know, people will, will watch it. More people will have the chance to see it. If it doesn't get any views, then it just get, get goes into YouTube obscurity. Nobody watches it. Nobody cares. Uh, and then that's me, uh, wasted quite a lot of my time making that content. Um, you know, because people haven't seen it and I want to reach as many people as I can, obviously. Right. So, yeah. Um, your old videos, especially the commentary commentaries were good and they're still good. Yeah. I appreciate that, mate. Thanks. That's why I thought like this video is like the newest video that I've made. It's kind of like a return to my old form that I had, you know, cause I think my old videos were pretty good and well re researched and they relied less on the comedy, you know, which is kind of what this new video is. So if you've got time, go and check it out, dude. Uh, anyway, enough plug-in my video. Uh, let's get some questions here. Okay. Canada. I like Canada. Um, in Chinese, Canada is uh, Janada, Canada. Okay. Okay. Still good even. Thanks, dude. Uh, I still think the flag vid is a classic. Uh, which one? Like putting it outside the embassy or walking through Chinatown with the flag? But yeah, I like those sort of videos, but I kind of, I've kind of just sort of recently been doing those uh, street interviews videos, and I really, I don't really think people are interested in it, to be honest with you. Um, it's quite funny at first, you know, when the first couple that you do, but when you're always doing that, I think people are just like, well, who cares about these random people's opinions? You know, why don't you tell us your opinion? Get to the point, you know? Uh, cool Rambo video. Yeah, watch it, dude. Like, that was a blast to make. And I'm surprised that that video now has had 30,000 30, views. Although I can't monetize that channel because it doesn't have enough subscribers and watch time. But I can still put out a video that gets 30,000 views and it has nothing to do with China. So that's pretty cool. Nothing to do with Taiwan or China. Um, have you heard anything on Vader from the police? Uh, honestly, no, I haven't tried to follow up though. Um, but I'm pretty sure that they'll just, they'll just won't do anything to be honest with you and whatever, man, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm afraid it wasn't really serious, but, um, I just had to, uh, report the guy because you don't just go around pushing people. Um, just because they were filming in a public space, you know, you don't like start punching him or anything. So I had to report the guy. You'll do great bringing attention to Hong Kong and Taiwan. Many won't be able to comment, but appreciate it. Yeah, man. Like, you know, I lived in Taiwan for several years and I've been to Hong Kong many times. So, you know, it's uh, the least I can do to defend these guys because they're awesome. Uh, yeah, I went to Rambo. Um, on that channel, I've got a couple of uh, videos of filming locations. Like I went to um, some Superman filming locations and I went to uh, Stephen King's It filming locations as well. So if you check that channel, you'll see a couple, couple of videos. Haven't posted anything on there for a while, though, because... Uh, yeah, I want to do some filming locations here in the UK, but I'm always too busy like doing other videos. Uh, so I don't have time for it, really. I mean, if I could, honestly, if I could do that as a job, make videos about filming locations instead of doing all of this stuff, this China, Taiwan stuff, I would definitely do that, to be honest with you. It's way more fun. 
It's way more fun and you get a lot less shit for doing it. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, Rambo is one of my, well, First Blood is one of my all time favorite films. Uh, I think the police would think you are taking the piss if you ring up and say, uh, yeah, actually, it was quite funny. And you know what? Like, when the police came to talk to me, there was about five. I should have filmed it. I, I really regret not filming the whole thing. But there was like five police officers. And um, one of them said, oh, you're lucky. You're lucky that he didn't use the force on you. And they were kind of taking the piss. They, they, they weren't really taking it so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but uh it was funny it was pretty funny okay yeah that was awful yeah it was it was really pathetic of that guy to behave like that let's see thank you you're welcome mate uh all hong kong as i know stopped posting anything online 100 percent. yeah more or less thank you for honest and great videos about china can you personally safely travel through china uh honestly man like i'm not that paranoid i really i don't think that if i went there i would really be in so much trouble um maybe you know if i got a connecting flight and it stopped off in hong kong or china i don't know i just don't know i don't want to be like you know i don't want to think that like you know i'm so important and special and that they know who i am you know, I feel like they have no idea who I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know. I really, it's, it's a tough question. Maybe, maybe I would get into trouble if I went there. I, I just don't know. But would I risk going there? Uh, no, definitely not. Just in case, because you can never be too sure. You know what I mean? But I mean, do I have delusions of grandeur and think that I'm on some kind of like, blacklist or something i don't think so i don't think so okay i noticed that too uh, if you want to meet up in derbyshire for film and locations for pride and prejudice give me a holler yeah that would be cool dude that would be cool well you know if any of you ever want to contact me my email address is on this channel so if you ever have any ideas for me or whatever you can or you can join my uh, discord I will probably leave a link somewhere, but yeah, please um, go and go and join my Discord. We'll be chatting there. Uh, let's see. Deleted YouTube, shadow banned my other anti-CCP account. Oh, really? Um, they probably have you somewhere in some folder, but yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they do. But I don't want to, you know, have delusions of grandeur, like I said, and, you know, think that, like, I'm special and, like, they're going to come after me if i go there you know but i just wouldn't risk it in the first place and actually i don't want to go back to china you know i really don't want to go back there um i've kind of been there uh, i've seen a lot of the country um i'd like to go and visit a country that i've never been to which is why i went to canada last year um and which is why i'm probably going to go to america this year uh at some point hopefully in the summertime or maybe sort of late spring, I'm trying to organize a trip to the US. So any of you guys who are in the US, uh, you got some good ideas for me, places to go, things to see, you know, let me know because I'm really hoping to go there. I would love to go there. Uh, watch out for those deaf fans. Hey, hey. Okay, we've got some things. I wonder how they would screen people. Yeah, um, you know, it is a bit freaky, though, because I remember traveling um, with one of my friends. Um, his family, uh, he's American, but his family are from Pakistan. And I do remember when we were going through um, security, like the immigration to leave China, um, you know, they've got like the typical booth, you queue up, you walk through um, and they stamp your passport and you leave and um, you go out and like the next person goes through and you're waiting. I was waiting there for my friends to go through and you I looked at the computer screen and they had photos of him in various different locations on their screen. So they knew exactly who he was, where he'd been. 
um, which really <laughs> creeped me out, to be honest with you. It was really freaky to see that. So yeah, um, they probably know a lot about the people who, who live there um, and you know the foreigners that are living there. Okay, cool. Take care. I'm out. I bet you're going to watch the China show. I'm pretty sure that's about to start, isn't it? Um, oh, they know who you are. Bold and bankrupt was arrested and banned in Russia for his criticisms of the war. Yeah, but I'm not bold and bankrupt. You know, he's got millions of subscribers or whatever. I've got like 17,000 subscribers. Uh, Louisiana was really cool. Yeah, I'd love, love, love to go there. Uh, come to New York. I would love to go to New York. That's like a dream. Uh, plenty of filming locations in New York as well, isn't there? Ghostbusters. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to NYC. It's a communist stronghold. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Lewis, do you eat hot dogs in the UK? Uh, people eat hot dogs in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but would I eat a hot dog? Probably not. <laughs> Because it's disgusting. Like, I hate hot dogs. Really hate hot dogs. I'm not a fan. Uh, you're welcome in the US anytime, brother. Not trying to be a wise guy, but come for the 4th of July. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Is that when you get invaded by aliens? Um, <laughs> and Bill Pullman is your president. Okay, uh, if any of you didn't get that reference, I was talking about the film Independence Day, obviously. Um, I would think you're safe in Hong Kong, but even I would worry about China. Yeah, no, I, I certainly would not go there because just in case, because you never know. You never know, right? I mean, honestly, like I was thinking about going to Vietnam, but I'm even a little bit paranoid about going there. Uh Go to try a New York hot dog. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That would be cool. Okay. I would not risk Hong Kong anymore. Yeah. I mean, not after the whole, um, what was it? Article 23 or whatever it's called. Yeah. It's all a bit screwed up at the moment, isn't it? It's all a little bit screwed up, just like this. Uh, uh, like, if I went there, I would be like... Oh. My. God. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I, I probably would be sensible not to go to Hong Kong. Um, yeah. You're worried too, but hanging on. I met a lot of uh, Hong Kongers in London, uh, like Nathan Law, you know, um, he's quite a famous one. Uh, so, yeah, I met a bunch of dissidents from Hong Kong. That's who I bought this t shirt from. Um, and it was, I made a video about it anyway. You can go and check it out. But yeah, it was really, really interesting. And hardly any views again for that video. Yeah, I got quite a few uh, Xi Jinping ones. I got this one. I got this one. What? What? <laughs> yeah, I got loads of those. I got loads. I, I need to make some more though. Um, but it's quite funny because I used this uh, website uh, with a. It had a like five free, um, free little uh, videos that you can make if you um, if you sign up. And then you get five free and then you have to pay like a subscription. So uh, I signed up with multiple accounts so I could just get the five free ones because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> and like now I don't think I can sign up for any more. I think I've like reached the limit. So, yeah, but it's uh, it's quite funny. Anywho, guys, uh, sorry, I'm probably boring the hell out of you all. Uh, 1997, it went downhill. Uh, you're probably right there. Um, but yeah, guys, sorry. I'm probably like boring all of you. I'm probably boring myself right now. But thanks for joining me today. It was another fun live stream. Um, I'll try and do some more. I don't know if you guys like them or not. I, I really like them just because we get to interact here in the comments. Because 
you know, on my videos, I don't really get to do that. Uh, I don't really get to answer your questions live and that kind of thing. And yeah, it's it's nice to interact with you guys. And I do appreciate everybody that subscribes to the channel, you know. Um, I wouldn't make the videos if I didn't care about my subscribers. Um, and I do appreciate all of the people. I know I often complain that my videos don't get many views, but that really doesn't matter because I know all of you guys here right now you watch each and every one of my videos, um, which is cool. It's really cool. Like, we've got 47 people here. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's like a, a small room of people, you know? Um, not many people get to do that. So I really appreciate it. It is really cool. Um, it would be nice if more and more people watch my videos, obviously, because I do put some effort into them. But at the end of the day, as long as you guys are watching, I'm going to keep making them. Uh, I'm not going to just give up and disappear because I actually do enjoy doing this. So, yeah, guys, uh, I'm about to cry. Man. No, <laughs> I'm not really. But thank you uh, very much for joining me here today. It was an interesting stream. It was a little bit sort of choppy and all over the place. But that really doesn't matter because that's what live streaming is all about. It's not going to go perfectly. And I can't edit out all of the mistakes that I make. You guys should see. Um, how many mistakes I make when I'm filming a video. It is ridiculous. Like, just for ex an example, the video that I um, recorded for today's video that I released today, man, I, I must have, like, recorded that audio for, like, 20 minutes and cut it down to about 13 minutes. Uh, so that was, what, like, uh, seven minutes of, like, mistakes? <laughs> You know, so it never goes smoothly, but at least when you're editing a video, you can just cut out all of that crap. But live streaming, it's not like that. And, you know, sometimes things don't go according to plan, right? But anyway, I am babbling on. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and I'm guessing you're probably going to all go over and watch the China show now. So I'm going to go over there and I will be in the chat. So. Let's continue our conversation over there. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video or live stream. And take care. And once again, thank you for joining me. And let's do the outro. Here it is. Mm -hmm.